Good morning, Mass Gardeners. I'm kneeling among the knees. Yeah, cypress knees. You know this plant. We call it bald cypress, but it's also known as the swamp cypress. And look at these unique knees. Just so awesome. You know, scientists have never really concluded exactly why this tree makes these knees. Some of the reasons are because obviously the tree likes to grow in wet swampy areas and they believe that it's maybe for stability of the tree itself. They used to say that sometimes they believed it was for uh, oxygen absorption, but there's really no proof that that's the case. But a very unique, create, protruding, always real vertical. It's almost made of branch-like quality. So all different sizes, all different clusters of them everywhere. And if you know anything about this wood, it's super, super lightweight. This is a sought after tree for lumber purposes. It's used in shingles and in baking barrels and, and all different things. And one time, out of curiosity, I sold one off and you just wouldn't believe how lightweight the wood is, but rot resistant, so it makes great fence posts. But it's a tree that's kind of confusing for identification. If it's got knees, well, you can kind of figure that out. But it's kind of hard once you see the tree trunk, it's confused with the Dawn, uh, Dawn Redwood, which is one of its sister plants. Here's the bark, and it's light, a brown color, same color as a redwood would be. And often this is kind of fluted at the base as it matures. And a wider buttress, which is also, of course, in a swampy area where they might be getting hurricanes, a tree like this could fall over since it's only rooted in water. That's the other reason it's got this wider buttress at the base of the tree trunk and believing why they also make knees. So it's Taxodium disticum, native from Maryland. This is one of the borderline states. You don't usually, it doesn't naturally occur north of here. The truth is it does grow in Boston. It's adaptable to many different places. It's really a recommended tree in your yard, especially in Raiden Garden areas. And that's why the master gardeners planted them all in here. This is a wet flooding area. There's a stream over on the side over here. This area floods and that's the reason she's used it in her watershed area. But let me show you how not to confuse it with your redwood trees. Highly adaptable, so I do recommend. They always have single leaders and a good, a good shade tree. You should keep it in a moist area, but I have one plant in my yard and it's not moist at all and it's doing fine. You, relatively rapid grower, so good growing plant. So I do recommend them. They get somewhat fall color or like a russet color in the fall and it's considered very desirable. And of course the lacy-like foliage, which is this. Well, I'll leave it lay here because you can see it better contrasted against the paper. So it's a deciduous conifer, which makes it really unique. Usually you think of conifers being Norway spruce and blue spruce, and they're evergreens, and they're conifers, but this conifer is deciduous. So it's going to shed all these little branchlets. This will shed off. So how do you identify this compared to a dawn redwood? Here's a redwood. Wow, do they ever look similar? So how do you tell them apart? key thought is this bald cypress is alternating up the stem these little branchlets and the easier one is up here these are alternating look right here alternate alternate that's the branch pattern come over here to the dawn redwood what do you see opposite 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 these are all opposite each other in little pairs up the stem when this sheds in the winter these branchlets are shed just like that and you can still see the buds are opposite on the woody stem. Opposite buds. Now let's look back over here at our bald cypress. When these are shed, you're not going to see the buds as much. And they don't leave as much of a leaf scar. But if you looked carefully at those, those will shed off. You would see the buds are alternating up the stem. So that's a super easy way to know the difference between the two of them. But a, a really feathery textured tree and pyramidal in shape. And I've put it in as a replacement for a Norway spruce that I have that a lightning has struck and I'm expecting some fast growth out of mine and I'm not near any water at all. So nice adaptable, you do need full sun. That is one of the characteristics. But once you get established, take a look at this pretty pyramidal tree. When I say pyramidal, it means Christmas tree shaped. And then because it's gonna grow in a dry area, I'm not gonna get those knees. It could be a little bit of interference with your lawnmower as you can well imagine. But when it's growing in these drier areas, you don't find that happening too much. But pretty cool, pretty cool if you've got a wet space like this. They had to clean this up around here so we could view these knees today. But kind of a cool Taxodium disticum, awesome bald cypress.